Hello everybody, today it is my second lecture of the module 3. In the last lecture, I introduced the one dimensional wave equation and the derivation was done based on Newton's second law, Hamilton principle and also I have shown uh, a discrete method of deriving this uh, differential equation of motion. So, differential equation actually it is a partial differential equation because the space and time both are involved and you have seen that this differential equation is analogous to the transverse vibration of the string. So, this is what is one dimensional wave equation and uh, in the last part of this lecture previous lecture I introduced just introduced the solution the general solution of the wave equation, but today I am going to derive the general solution and uh, want to give you some examples using the general solution. Okay. So, today's topic is D L Umber solution of the wave equation. Okay. So, in this lecture I will derive the general solution uh, that was uh, derived by D L Umber's and I will show how this is the basic equation is derived and solution of some problems that I will uh, present before you. Uh, given the initial condition of the string, uh, how you determine the wave propagation in terms of initial conditions. So, that thing I will discuss today and in addition I will also discuss a problem of compound string and energy of waves. So, first let us discuss the D L Umber's solution. So, wave equation is given by del square y by del t square equal to c square into del square y by del x square. So, you can note that c is very important parameter which is known as wave velocity, where s is the tension uniform tension in the string, tension in string and your rho is linear mass density. There is mass per unit length of the string. So, these two parameters defines the wave velocity and you see that parameter is important in the wave equation. The general solution was found by D L Umber's and it is given by y x t equal to superimposition of two functions. Uh, one is uh, a with argument x minus c t plus another function f which with argument x plus c t. Now, you can see these two function describe the waves that is propagating towards the uh, right or towards the left with the same velocity c. So, that figure that you are seeing here that can demonstrate this wave propagation given the initial disturbance in any form say at t is equal to 0. And then when the initial disturbance is removed that is the string is given a initial disturbance like that and then it is removed. So, it will break up into two waves, one will uh, travel towards the right and another will travel towards the left. Of course, the amplitude of the wave will be different because after superimposition you will get the actual shape of the string. Okay. So, the waves are separated at t is equal to t 1 with further time it will travel towards the support and of course, when it encounters a fixed support then the wave will be reflected. So, that I will discuss here with an example. Okay. Now, let us first tell the general solution how it is obtained. So, you can see the wave equation is del square y by del t square equal to c square into del square y by del x square. So, this is actually acceleration term you can understand it 
and this is actually giving you the elastic restoring force. It is c square is s by rho. So, if I take rho here in the left hand side, then it will represent the inertia force. Okay. Now, this is obtained like that. Let us assume a transform coordinate j is equal to x minus c t and eta equal to x plus c t. Express del y by del x as this x equal to del y by del j into del j by del x plus del y by del eta into del eta by del x. Note that uh, del j by del x suppose here j is equal to x minus c t. So, if I differentiate this del j by del x it will be 1. Similarly, if I differentiate del eta by del x it is 1. So, that quantity is 1, that quantity is 1. So, simply we get del y by del x equal to del y by del j plus del y by del eta. Now, let us come to this time derivative del y by del t. So, you can see again we write it del y by del j into del j by del t plus del y by del eta into del eta by del t. Now, again you note that when I differentiate this quantity del j by del t, because j is a function of x and t, we get minus c. Similarly, when I differentiate del eta by del t, we get plus c. So, using this quantity, these two quantities, we now write this equation del y by del t equal to minus c into del y by del j plus c into del y by del eta. Now, of course, the equation contains the second derivative both in space and time. So, therefore, we have again have to transform this first derivative to second derivative in j eta coordinate. So, so we take say second derivative of y with respect to x we already obtained the first derivative. So, we write this here and we differentiate this with respect to x. Okay. Next, remembering that this is 1. So, again the interchanging the operator, we interchange this d by del by d j del j and insert del by del x here. So, we can write del by del j into del y by del x that is permitted because it is a linear equation. So, interchanging the operator we can write del square y by del x square equal to del by del j into del y by del x into del j by del x again it is 1 we have shown earlier and del y by del eta into del eta by del x again interchanging the differential operator we write it here del by del eta into del y by del x. So, this is the first derivative of the y with respect to x and del eta by del x. So, these quantities are 1. So, we get this now ultimately del by del j into del y by del x plus del by del eta into del y by del x. Okay. That is now written in this fashion del j by again this del y by del x we bring here. Okay. Then again it is brought here. So, del by del j into del y by del j plus del y by del eta plus del by del eta into del y by del zeta into plus del y by del eta. You can see after this operation we now get del square y by del x square consists of three terms one is del square y by del j square plus two del square y by del j into del eta plus del square y by del eta square. So, this is we have to again use this in the wave equation. So, wave equation was this uh, quantity. Okay. So, we now get this term in terms of j and eta. Now, we 
required to get this term del square y by del t square in terms of xi eta. So, next we take del y by del t and it is written as del y by del xi del xi by del t plus del y by del eta into del eta by del t. Again we see that del xi by del t is nothing but minus c into del y by del xi and del y by del eta is plus c. So, this plus c into del y by del eta. Okay. For obtaining the second derivative, we now write it here del square y by del t square and again we write this interchanging the differential operator del by del j into del y by del t into del j by del t plus del by del eta into del y by del t into del eta by del t. Now, you can see that uh, this quantity already we have obtained and it is minus c and this del y by del t is nothing but minus c del y by del j plus c into del y by del eta. Similarly, here we write del y by del t as minus c into del y by del j plus c del y by del eta and again we know that del eta by del t is equal to plus c because we use a transformation that you remember that we have used this and eta is equal to x plus c t. So, naturally when we take the time derivative of j then it becomes minus c and here minus c is written and when we take the time derivative of eta first derivative it becomes plus c. So, again after uh, operating this quantity you can easily see that the del square y by del t square becomes c square into third bracket del square y by del j square minus 2 del square y by del j del eta plus del square y by del j square. So, we got two quantities uh, of uh, second derivative that is del square y by del x square and del square y by del t square in terms of variable j n eta. So, substituting this in the wave equation. So, wave equation is this, this is our fundamental wave equation okay, in one dimension. So, substituting this quantity here and this quantity here okay, and writing this you can see that c square will be cancelled from both sides and other quantities will also be cancelled and then only we are left with del square y by del j del eta and of course, 4 will be there and uh, since it is 0. So, we write del square y by del j, j into del eta okay, equal to 0. So, this is the final equation. Now, solution of that will give the wave solution let us see. Now, integrating with respect to j, our equation was this, you see this is our equation. So, if this equation is first integrated with respect to j, then we get del y by del eta and then a constant. So, constant will be a function of eta. Okay. So, we take this constant as h eta, where h eta is an arbitrary function of eta. Now, again integrate. So, what we get y is equal to integration h eta d eta plus because we are integrating with respect to eta. So, a constant term that will appear we can take it is a function of j. Okay. The integral is a function of eta only. Now, if you see this, this is integrated with respect to eta. So, therefore, it is a indefinite integral. So, this will result a integration with a function of eta. So, now we write that the function that y because we transform x and t in terms of variable j n eta. So, we write y j eta function of j eta 
is equal to a function of f eta that is this integral plus g j a function of j. Now, replacing now j and eta. So, j we have assumed that x minus c t and eta we have assumed x plus c t. So, replacing this j with x plus c t we get one function and uh, replacing eta eta with x minus c t we get this uh, function g minus x c t. Okay. So, j is x minus uh, c t. So, here g is a function of x minus c t and f is a function of x plus c t. Remember that c is a wave velocity. This equation clearly demonstrates that the d l number solution for one dimensional wave equation is nothing but superimposition of two functions. The two functions are also will be of similar nature and they represent the propagated wave one with towards the right uh, another towards the left and you can see in both the function the constant wave velocity c is incorporated. So, here since the tension in the string is assumed to be constant. So, s by rho is equal to c square. So, wave velocity is treated as constant here. Okay. So, D L Ambers has given this historical solution that is y x t equal to g x minus c t plus f x plus c t. So, if you observe this equation minutely you will see that this is uh, representing the wave nature of the solution. Consider an infinite string stressed from minus infinity to plus infinity. Say infinite string is there and it is stressed uh, boundary is at infinity. So, boundaries are not specified. So, if I displace the string initially at t is equal to 0, then string will be of this shape initially. Okay, this shape. Now, if I release this, this will propagate as an individual wave towards right and towards left. Okay. So, but the amplitude of the wave will be different here. It will be smaller than this wave that we are going to prove. So, at any time t is equal to t 1, the wave will be displaced by this amount and the displaced shape of the string will be like that now. Okay. The red color line will show the displaced configuration of this string at time t is equal to t 1 okay. and this will go on and at the boundary it will be generally reflected. So, that phenomenon we will discuss later on. Now, to determine the form of the function when g x and f x are given and initial conditions are known. If the initial conditions are given, whether it is a parabolic shape or it is a triangular shape or any other shape, we can determine the solution in terms of initial conditions. So, let us prove this. So, y is equal to g x minus c t plus f x plus c t. So, these are the functions at the instant t is equal to 0 we get y x 0 equal to f x plus g x and say this is phi x. So, phi x is the initial configuration of the string. So, a string was like that initially straight okay, stressed between two points may be finite or may be infinite distance and then if you displace this by initially by any form. So, that function is known as phi x. Okay. So, initial displaced function. So, now let us obtain this del y by del t. So, del y by del t equal to del g by del j into del j by, by del t plus del f by del eta into del eta by del t, where it was assumed that j is equal to x minus c t and eta is equal to x plus c t. So, we can write y is equal to x comma t, y is a function of x and t 
equal to y is a function of j n eta is nothing but g j plus f eta. We can uh, now write del y by del t as del g by del x minus c because this del j by del t you can see del j by del t is nothing but minus c and del eta by del t is plus c. So, here the second term will be del f by del x plus c we have replaced j and eta by x. Okay. So, now initial velocity okay. since this is a second order differential equation we need to incorporate two initial conditions one is on displacement and another is on velocity as well as we require the boundary condition also if the string is of finite length. Okay. Now, here let the initial velocity be 0, then we get here from earlier equation that del y by del t is nothing but del g by del x plus del f by del x and this c will be common in both sides. So, c if I take here common then I can write c is equal to c into del g by del x minus del f by del x and since initial displacement is 0 that we initial velocity is 0 that we have assumed initial velocity velocity is 0. So, therefore, we get from this equation del g by del x equal to del f by del x. So, integrating both sides we get g of x equal to f of x plus c, c is a constant. Now, using this in this equation y is equal to x comma 0 because this is the configuration of the string at time t is equal to 0. Okay. So, this is the configuration of the string at time t is equal to 0 equal to f x plus g x and we assume that this is another function superimposition of 2 is a function phi x. Okay. Now, here if I put g x as f x plus c say g x is replaced by f x plus c then we get f x is equal to half of phi x minus half of c. Similarly, we get g x is equal to half of phi x plus half c. So, therefore, we get uh, g x and then replacing x in f x by x plus c t and in g x by x minus c t we get a specific solution for the given initial condition. So, y x t equal to g x minus t plus f x t equal to now half phi x minus c t plus half phi x plus c t. So, given the initial condition, given the initial displacement, initial displacement say y x 0, but an 0 initial velocity zero initial velocity this we get the solution in terms of the initial displaced configuration as half phi x minus c t plus half phi x plus c t. So, this is valid only the initial velocity is 0 condition. Okay. So, let us uh, show one example of this uh, wave solution in terms of initial condition. Now, here you can see an example of infinite string is taken and initial displacement is imposed on the string which is equal to phi x equal to 0 0.025 divided by 1 plus 9 x square. Okay find the expression for the subsequent motion of the string if it is released from rest the tension is 
20 Newton and the mass per unit length is 5 into 10 to the power minus 4 kg per meter. As I have told you that mass is denoted by the linear density, so it is unit is kg per meter. Also sketch the waveform at t is equal to 0, t is equal to 0 0.002 second and uh, also t is equal to 2 second. So, how we obtain the solution? Given the initial condition, we have derived that the solution is y x t equal to half phi x minus c t plus half phi x plus c t. Okay. Now, you can see given the phi as 0 0.025 by 1 plus 9 x square, we can now write here the y x t will be equal to half into 0.25 1 plus 9 x. Now, x here we have to replace by x minus c t in one case. In another case, it will be half 0 0.025 divided by 1 plus 9 into x plus c t. Okay. So, c is the wave velocity here we have obtained by substituting s as 20 Newton and mass as 5 into 10 to the power minus 4 kg per meter. So, we get the wave velocity as 200 meter per second. Okay. So, this is the initial displaced configuration of the string. This is the red color line is the initial displaced configuration of the string. Okay. So, it is given as phi is equal to 0 0.025 divided by 1 plus 9 x square. Now, when the initial disturbance is released, then two waves will propagate, one will propagate towards right and another will propagate towards left. And this function as you see it is half into phi. So, generally 0 0.025 divided by 2, it will be 0 0.0125 and towards uh, left, the argument of the function will be 9 into x plus 0 0.002 that is the time and into c, c is the wave velocity, wave velocity okay. that we have already obtained as s divided by rho equal to 200 meter per second okay, for the given data. Similarly, another wave at t is equal to 0 0.002 second that is our concern, it will move towards right as another wave of uh, this point 0 0.0125 divided by 1 plus 9 x minus 0 0.002 c and the configuration of the string will be this at this time instant t is equal to 0 0.002 second. Next, with further progress of time, the wave will further propagate towards the left and towards right. So, at instant t is equal to 2 second, the shape of the string will be like that. Okay. So, the wave will be propagated by a distance of 2 c. How 2 c is coming? 2 is the time and c is the wave velocity. So, time into wave velocity is the distance traversed by the wave at t is equal to 2 second. So, like that you can sketch the waves at any other uh, instant. Okay. Now, reflection at the boundary that is very important. So, for example, we have a fixed boundary and string is of finite length. So, in that case uh, if the boundary is are rigid that means the string is fixed at the boundaries the y should be 0 at the boundary. So, in that case we can easily get because y x t our solution is y x t is equal to f x plus c t plus g into x minus c t. Okay. So, at the boundary x is at boundary suppose we take this condition x is equal to l. 
So, x is equal to L is one boundary and x is equal to 0 is another boundary. So, at this 0 boundary there is x is equal to 0, the wave will be uh, this g x will be g minus c t equal to f x plus c t will be f plus c t because x is 0 here. Similarly, on the uh, boundary L that is L is another boundary here. So, the function g L minus c t equal to f L plus c t. Now, you can see here two functions are of the same form, but of opposite sign that you can easily find out because at the boundary displacement is always 0. So, at the boundary y putting x is equal to 0, y 0 t equal to 0. So, therefore, you are getting f is equal to minus g and even say at the boundary x is equal to L, when you put uh, this x is equal to L in this equation, you must get the displacement at the rigid support to be 0. So, therefore, here again f L plus c t equal to g x minus c t or if I uh, consider this wave will be of opposite nature. Okay. These two waves will be of opposite nature. So, this shows that two functions are of the same, but of opposite sign. So, a wave travelling to the right is reflected into a similar wave of opposite displacement travelling to the left. So, here you can see a wave B uh, when it uh, encounters the boundary and boundaries are rigid. So, the reflected wave is again propagating on the this is the incident wave and this is the reflected wave in the propagating in the opposite direction. So, here it is y 2 is equal to minus f x plus c t and here it will be y 1 equal to f 1 x minus c t. Now, displaced shape of the or configuration of the string at any instant will be y is equal to y 1 plus 2 provided the boundary conditions are satisfied correctly. Okay. So, this is the phenomenon of reflection at the boundary. Okay. Now, what uh, is the effect of reflections? The important effect of this two reflection is to cause the motion of the freely vibrating string to become periodic. Now, you can see this wave is reflecting after striking this uh, boundary and then it is propagating in the opposite direction with the same velocity and with the opposite sign. So, therefore, if c is a wave velocity then a pulse originating at x is equal to 0 reaches x is equal to l after interval of l by c. So, that is obvious if the velocity is constant then this the distance l will be covered at an interval l by c. Okay. At the boundary x is equal to l x is equal to l it is again reflected and returns to here at 0 n. So, x is equal to 0 n. So, there again it reaches x is equal to l. So, you can see the total time of travel is 2 l by c. So, from that we can infer that the two reflections cause the motion of a freely vibrating string as a periodic motion. The shape of the pulse after second reflection is identical with that of original pulse. Okay. Now, here the dashed line of wave B is shown as being reflected to become a solid line of wave B. Okay. Let us see another example. Here we can demonstrate the reflection phenomena. A uniform string of length L and fixed at both ends is released at 0 initial velocity from the displaced position shown in figure. So, question is uh, to sketch the shape of the string at time interval L by 8 a as the wave propagates. So, at an interval of time L by 8 a where a is the wave velocity here a is the wave velocity. 
that is if s is a tension then wave velocity is s by rho where rho is the mass density remember that the rho is mass density but unit is um, kg per meter that is linear mass density okay so here you can see that at an interval of l by 8 s uh, second okay so if the wave velocity is a then you can see that here to show the wave propagation we have divided the string into 8 equal segments okay now at t is equal to 0 the displaced shape of this string is this okay so this is the displaced shape of the string this is in a triangular form and its altitude is h it can be easily shown that its altitude is h so when it is released the wave propagation starts and this initial displacement shape will give rise to two waves which will be separated and one will travel towards the right and another will travel towards the left however the magnitude of the wave now will be half that we have seen that it was half phi x half phi x minus c t plus half phi x plus c t. So, that we got earlier given the initial condition and initial velocity being 0 we have got this this solution is like that. So, this is what is reflected here. So, at time is equal to t is equal to 0 this will be at the, this is the displaced shape and the height of the wave is h then the height is two separate wave and it will be h by 2. So, at t is equal to l by 8 a the traveling wave moved one to the right and other to the left the configuration of the string at this moment is resultant of two traveling waves. So, two traveling waves are shown here and you can see the dashed lines here, but this is the configuration of the string at t is equal to l 8 by a second. Okay. At any time shape of the string is the resultant configuration of the traveling waves. Now, let us take the displaced configuration at other time interval. Okay. So, t is equal to l by 8 a this is the configuration and t is equal to l by 4 a the wave has further moved. So, you can see the one wave is now here and another wave is here. So, its magnitude is the amplitude is h by 2 original amplitude was h, but here it will be h by 2 again at inter next time interval T l by 8 a the wave will now encounter the boundary. Okay. So, then the reflection will start and l by 2 a you will see the reflected wave here and next l by uh, 5 l by 8 a this wave will be propagating towards each other, but in the opposite direction whatever was uh, the direction uh, whatever was the nature of the wave in the before reflection now it will be just reversed. Okay. So, it will be propagating here the amplitude here is again h by 2 with further elapse of time you will get this uh, propagating T 7 L by 8 a again this thing is similar to that whatever we got here. So, you can see that motion is repeating and therefore, it is a it gives a periodic solution at t is equal to l by a again we are getting the original displaced shape of the string. So, propagation of waves at time interval t is equal to l by 8 a are shown here to demonstrate the solution of the d l numbers one dimensional wave equation. Now, let us investigate a problem where we get 
this uh, two different density of the material of the string. Okay. Here you can see this is a portion of a string, here mass density is rho 1, whereas here mass density is rho 2. Okay. The tension is assumed to be uniform. Now, such type of problem where the string is termed as a compound string because of two different materials. So, it is convenient to use the exponential complex exponential form to formulate the problem. So, let us assume that y 1 that is one wave that is propagating in the string where the density is rho 1. So, it is uh, consisting of a 1 into e to the power i omega t minus x by a 1 plus a 2 into e i omega t plus x by a 1, where a 1 is a wave velocity for this portion s by rho 1 and a 2 is the wave velocity in another portion where the density is rho 2. Okay. So, here you can see one is the wave two portions are taken, one is incident wave and another is reflected wave, but in the next portion that is the transmitted wave that is taken as y 2 x t equal to b into e to the power i omega into t minus x by a 2. Okay. Our intention is to find the nature of the wave motion as well as the energies of the wave during transmission through the compound string. Okay. Now, here you can see at the common junction the displacement should be same and the force that is the vertical component of the tension in these two dx in this common junction should be same. So, therefore, we are writing here as y 1 x comma t at x is equal to 0. If I take this as the origin x is equal to 0, then at this point we take this y 1 x t at x is equal to 0 equal to y 2 x t at x equal to 0. And the vertical component of the tension at the common junction that is s into del y 1 by del x at evaluated at x is equal to 0 equal to s into del y 2 by del x evaluated at x is equal to 0. Okay. Now, let us take these uh, two equation, what are the two equations that we have taken? One is y 1, y 1 is a 1 e to the power i omega i omega t minus x by a 1. plus a 2 e i omega t plus x by a 1. So, th this is y 1 that we have assumed earlier you can see here equation number 1 and y 2 is b e to the power i omega t minus x by a 2. Okay two different wave velocities a 1 and a 2 are there because of different densities. Okay. Now, to satisfy this condition, this was our earlier equation number 1 and equation number 2. To satisfy the compatibility condition at the junction, we now evaluate this put x is equal to 0 here. So, we are getting a 1 e to the power i omega t plus a 2 e to the power i omega t equal to from this equation b into e to the power i omega t. So, we get a 1 plus a 2 is equal to b. So, that equation we get applying the first condition say y 1 and y 2 are both 0 at the common junction. Okay. y 1 and y 2 are equal at the x is equal to 0. So, that is the string that I have told you that have different densities. So, up to here say one density 
and then another material density. So, therefore, this is the common junction if I take this is y 1 and this is y 2 if I take. Okay. So, therefore, we get this at this junction if I take x is equal to 0 here it is rho 1 and here it is rho 2. Okay. Here the displacement should be same. So, y 1 equal to y 2 here for this portion of the string displacement is assumed as y 1 for this portion of the string the displacement is assumed as y 2. Now, vertical component of the tension that is s del y 1 by del x equal to s del y 2 by del x. How the vertical tension is evaluated? Say tension is s here and this is the slope. Okay. Slope is nothing but del y by del x. So, vertical component of this force is here s sin theta and it is approximately s del y by del x. Okay. So, therefore, we take this vertical component of the tension here s into del y 1 by del x equal to s del y 2 by del x. Okay. So, from this equation you take the derivative you will be able to get it okay, this equation and this equation. Okay. Suppose, if I take the derivative with respect to x. So, a 1 e to the power i omega t, but here say if I take the derivative with respect to x minus 1 by a 1 will come. So, here i into a 1 that is 1 by a 1. So, therefore, here again for this quantity 1 by a 1 will be there and here it is minus 1 by a 2. i is the imaginary quantity i is remember this is i equal to root over minus 1. The complex form is taken so that the periodic motion is represented by complex function. So, we get this uh, equation two equations and from these two equations we now arrive at this a 1 minus a 2 divided by a 1. Say this equation now can be written as a 1 minus a 2 divided by a 1 equal to b by a 2. Okay. So, 5 and 6 what information can they give let us see. Solving 5 and 6 we get a 2 by a 1 equal to a 1 minus a 2 divided by a 1 plus a 2 and b by a 1 will yield expression which is equal to 2 a 1 divided by a 1 plus a 2. Now, substituting the following say a 1 we know a 1 in terms of the wave velocity and tension that is known to us a 2 is also known to us in terms of tension and wave velocity. So, we are writing that a 2 by a 1 ratio is root over rho 1 minus rho 2 divided by root over rho 1 plus rho 2 and b by a 1 we can now write 2 by root rho 1 divided by root rho 1 plus rho 2. Okay. So, these two uh, ratios we have got. Now, you can see different conditions may arise. If rho 2 is very large that means, at the fixed end rho 2 is infinity then what this ratio gives. So, evaluating the limit of this function when this calculate the limit as rho 2 tends to 0 at the infinity at the fixed end then we get say how the limit is calculated you divide this uh, numerator and denominator by root rho 2. So, we get minus 1 plus root over rho 1 by rho 2 and similarly in the denominator we get 1 plus root over rho 1 plus rho 2. Since rho 2 is uh, approaching infinity, so this quantity is 0 this is 0. So, that means, a 2 by a 1 equal to minus 1. So, what is the physical significance of this expression There is a 2 by a 1 equal to minus 1 that shows that reflected wave a 2 is equal to the incident wave a 1 except for the negative sign. 
So, reflected wave and incident wave two parts I have uh, told you one is incident wave that is A 1 and another is reflected wave at the common junction that is A 2. So, they are same, but with negative sign. So, this means reflection occurs with a reversal. Okay. So, that is obvious at uh, the common boundary. Okay. Now, again this ratio that we have obtained in terms of density the rho 1 and rho 2 again we interpret suppose the string is uniform. So, in that case rho 2 equal to rho 1 that is known to us for uniform string and we get from this here b by a 1 equal to 1. So, this means the transmitted wave b is the transmitted wave is exactly the same as incident waves. So, that means if this was not a compound string that the it was a string of uniform density then there is no reflection at this point because this is a, a continuous distribution of mass. So, the wave will be transmitted along the string. Now, if rho 2 is greater than rho 1 that means non-uniform string. So, that means b may be smaller than a 1. So, here it signifies that amplitude of the transmitted wave b is smaller than the amplitude of the incident wave a 1. So, this may happen if b is greater than a 1 for the case when rho 2 is greater than rho 1. That means, right hand side of the string the heavier material is uh, given whereas, in the left hand side the lighter material is there. That means, rho 2 is greater than rho 1. So, in that case the amplitude of the transmitted wave b is smaller than the amplitude of the incident wave a 1 and vice versa will be when b 1 is greater than a 1. Okay. Now, if rho 2 is very small that may also happen. So, this may indicate a free end at, at the common junction that means, rho is equal to 0. So, that end is free theoretically. So, here we get from that equation you can get here we get a 2 is equal to a 1. Okay. If rho 2 is very small that means, rho 2 is 0. So, then we get a 2 is equal to a 1. So, that means, reflected wave a 2 is exactly same as the incident wave a 1, but this happens only this is a free end. Okay. Now, let us calculate uh, the energy of the wave. Now, we have seen there is a incident wave, reflected wave and transmitted wave. So, if I take the kinetic energy of the wave propagation, then we can see that if the wave motion is harmonic, then we can see that acceleration will be proportional to uh, this uh, omega square. So, if a 1, a 2, b etcetera are amplitude, then the velocity, velocity will be a 1 omega and uh, if I multiply it by mass density. So, energy per unit length will be half rho amplitude into the omega that is the frequency of the wave propagation square. So, that means, this is the kinetic energy of the incident wave. So, rho 1 is the material density, a 1 is the amplitude of the incident wave and omega is the the frequency of motion. Similarly, the reflected energy will be half rho 1 a 2 square omega square and transmitted energy is half rho 2 b square omega square. From the principle of conservation of energy, the rate of energy approaching the junction must equal the rate of energy leaving the junction. So, here we can see that half rho 1 a 1 square omega square a 1 equal to half rho 1 a 2 square omega square a 1 plus half rho 2 b square omega square a 2. B. So, to find out the rate we have multiplied it by wave velocity in the appropriate portion. So, one is the approaching wave, this is the approaching wave must equal the rate of energy of the leaving wave. So, leaving wave are the reflected wave and transmitted wave. So, we have equated these energies. 
So, this becomes equal to here I have introduced one parameter z, z is the mechanical impedance that is denoted by z equal to rho into a, where rho is the mass density and a is the wave velocity. So, if I know these two quantities then mechanical impedance z is rho into a and we have we can now write here the left hand side as z 1 into a 1 square equal to z 1 a 2 square plus z 2 b square. So, that is one relation we get in terms of mechanical impedance. Okay. So, next uh, from 6 and 9, okay, this is the ninth equation and 6 equation is this 6 equation is this. So, from 6 and 9 we can now obtain this reflected energy to the incident energy ratio as z 1 minus z 2 divided by z 1 plus z 2 whole square and transmitted energy to the incident energy ratio equal to 4 z 1 into z 2 divided by z 1 plus z 2 whole square. For maximum transmission of energy two impedance must match each other in other words z 1 should be equal to z 2. So, there will be no reflected energy in that case there will be no reflected energy and transmission will be maximum so, transmitted energy will be maximum. So, that is our intention. So, transmitted energy equal to the incident energy in that case. Okay. So, let us see what we have done in today's lecture. In this lecture the D L Humbert solution of wave equation is discussed how the solution in terms of the uh, two function f x plus c t and g x minus c t have been found and the derivation was done with a transformation of variable taking a new variable xi and eta. So, after obtaining the d l Humbert solution we show that given the initial displacement and with zero velocity the two functions are derived which shows the initial disturbance of the string and this is decomposed into two identical waves traveling in opposite direction. So, that is the solution that we have obtained in terms of initial condition. If initial condition is given as a function say phi x then the wave solution will be y x t provided initial velocity 0 wave solution will be y x t equal to half phi x minus c t plus half phi x plus c t. The reflection of traveling waves at the boundaries are discussed and it is shown that wave motion exhibits periodicity. Two problems were discussed and also an example of compound string was given. Expression for the energy of the incident wave, reflected wave and transmitted waves are given and mechanical impedance of the waves was defined. Thank you. Thank you.